smart economy. Well I call the Honourable Eugenie C. Tanako, Mr. Speaker. I did so enjoy listening to Mr. Bennett because he highlighted why National is there and the Greens, Labour and New Zealand First are here. The repeated references to competition in his speech, I lost count of how many times he talked about competition in the market, and it's been National's reliance on competition, that whole philosophy which is heartless when it comes to people wanting affordable housing. Its reliance on the market has ended up with the housing crisis we have today. Its reliance on the market and competition has been at the basis of its unwillingness to intervene. Mr Bennett, 20 per cent of the sales of houses in Auckland in the March quarter were to overseas persons. This government has intervened because we don't think New Zealand uh, house buyers should have to be competing with overseas people who can pay often a much higher price. The domestic market for our houses should be determined here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, not influenced by competition from overseas persons who are speculating often. So that's why, Mr Bennett, this bill has been introduced and is close to being passed. The national government said they couldn't do it. Todd McClay walked around before the election saying it would cut across trade agreements. National wanted this to be done by stamp duty. That would have cut across trade agreements. So I congratulate Minister Parker and I am very grateful for the huge amount of work that officials in Treasury and the Overseas Investment Office and the work of members in the Select Committee have done to actually finalise and develop this bill. It is a measure to ensure that New Zealanders can get easier access to affordable homes by requiring um, any overseas persons to have to go through a screening process. And as the Minister responsible for the Overseas Investment Office, can I tell Mr Ben it, that there are significant changes there to ensure that those processes are efficient, both in the forestry sector and in the residential um, sector, because the processes should be clear-cut and easy to understand, and there should be adequate enforcement mechanisms as well. The previous speaker was worried about that. Can I inform him that there's been seven million allocated in Budget 2018 for compliance and enforcement by the OIO, and that there are provisions in this bill which would enable the office to require overseas purchasers, if they have bought forestry land, for example, and if they are not complying with the conditions of their um, application, to actually be required to dispose of that land. There is more monitoring being done by the OIA. So Mr Bennett should rest assured that this Act will actually be enforced. And on the forestry front, his um, speech there was making a mountain out of a molehill. The reason this Act gives a clearer, uh, more streamlined process for forestry is because of climate change. We have a lot of catching up to do because, as our previous speaker, Mr Patterson, noted, National squandered the opportunity to do something about climate change. We need a forestation to sequester that carbon, to reduce the likelihood of going beyond the tipping point so that New Zealand does its share to reduce our emissions and to put us on track to being a zero carbon economy by 2050. 70 per cent of our forestry uh, in New Zealand is already overseas owned, but it's the investment that these companies can bring to increasing the plantings, to doing more processing, to provide more jobs in the regions. That is why we want a streamlined test. So there are good reasons, Mr Bennett, for that streamlined test, and it's not um, an easy run. And the OIO will be ensuring that there is good information on its website around um, the consents that are granted, around the standing consents um, in the housing property sector. We want this Act to work. The OIO is investing the time and resources in working with the real estate sector, with the conveyances, with the forestry sector, to make sure that the tests in the Act are understood, that the legislation is ready to go um, when it comes into force. Because, Mr Speaker, this Act 
is about, or this bill is about ensuring that we get those billion trees in the ground, that we do our share to reduce our greenhouse emissions, and that the government ensures that there is every um, opportunity for New Zealanders to purchase affordable homes without having to compete um, with people overseas. So this bill, Mr Speaker, will make a significant difference. It has had to be done um, at speed, but there's still been a six-month select committee process because, as Minister Parker has repeatedly explained, but the opposition still doesn't seem to realise, it needed to be got through um, before the CP, TPPA um, came into um, effect. So that's why we are doing what National said couldn't be done, and particularly in that housing space, with the provisions in the legislation will ensure that while there's not competition with overseas speculators, where there is investment by overseas companies in actually uh, significantly increasing housing supply um, to deal with that housing affordability issue, that that can be accommodated under the Act. So it is sensible, um, Mr Bennett. And what else did Mr Bennett say? Lose, we face a risk with the forestry provisions having New Zealand lose some of our best land. That is very rich coming from a national MP, because, of course, it was under national that their ministerial directive to the Overseas Investment Office made sure that those purchasing um, farms who were living overseas, overseas companies, didn't need to go through all the tests under the Act unless they were large farms, yeah. ten times the size of the average farm. So their ministerial directive made sure that the Act was only very um, narrowly applied and in very limited circumstances. And it has been this government that has changed that ministerial directive to ensure that any sales of uh, rural land over five hectares have to go through a consenting regime um, under the Act. So it's making sure that where there are sales of land to overseas persons, that there are substantial and identifiable benefits to New Zealand. So this government's agenda is about ensuring that everyone recognises that it is a privilege to own land in New Zealand if you're an overseas person. It's got to deliver substantial and identifiable benefits and that we don't want overseas speculation in houses because we want to ensure that New Zealanders have access to affordable housing. And the National Party, with its um, emphasis on the market, on competition, is all about um, allowing property speculation, um, people to capture uh, financial gains for themselves with no concern that our rates of home ownership in New Zealand have fallen to the lowest in 60 years. This bill is about helping uh, reverse that, helping make housing more affordable, helping ensure that we get the investment in forestry, helping um, address our climate crisis, not the head-in-the-sand attitude that we've seen um, from the national opposition. I commend this bill to the House. I thank all of the officials and Treasury and the OIO who have worked long and hard on it. I congratulate Michael Wood um, as chair of the Select Committee and the huge work that Minister Parker has done in shepherding this bill um, through the House. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Speaker. Um, Ian McKelvey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, this is a funny place, this Parliament. You know, some days